In this video, we're going to create a simple search form with Google Apps Script for our sheet that performs a date range search on a date column and also includes custom sort options to sort our results columns by. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create. I have two tabs, one called Form and a second called Records, and that contains my detailed data set that just includes loan records for the first six months of the year. So we have this origination date column that is our date column. And back on our form sheet, we have a input for the begin and end dates of our date range. We also have drop down menus for our primary sort and then our secondary sort. So if I were to change this to April 1st through April 15th for our origination date range search, and maybe this time I'll change the primary sort to loan type and the secondary sort to location. When I click run, our results area is just going to update automatically. So you can see it updates based on our date range. We have a primary sort by the loan type and then a secondary sort by the location. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our search form sheet. So what we need to do is go and copy our headers from our detail back on the record sheet and just paste them over here in our results area. And we need to make sure that the names of our headers over here are the same as our headers in our data set. So now what we want to do is add our drop down menus for our sort one and sort two options. So I'm going to click in this first cell directly below our header here and go up to data and then data validation. We're going to add a rule. We want to select the second option here, drop down from a range. So I'm going to click in this box here and then going to click here and then go select this row of headers. Click OK. Click Done. I'm going to click in this second cell below our Sort 2 header. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to do a drop down from a range. I'm going to click here, click this little box here, and then select this row of headers again. So now we have our two drop down options menus for our custom sorts. So now we are ready to begin writing the code to execute this date search. So I'm going to go up to extensions and then app script. I'm going to rename this to date search. To save time, I'm going to drop in code that I've already created and just run through it. So we have several variables here. So we begin with a variable called SS that represents our spreadsheet variable that is equal to our spreadsheet application and get active spreadsheet to get the one we're in now. So then we have two sheet variables, one for form, that is equal to our spreadsheet variable and then get sheet by name form. Same thing for our record sheet. That is equal to our spreadsheet variable get sheet by name records. We then have a variable called range records that is equal to our record sheet and then get the data range and get the values. So what that does is it gets every single one of our values from our record sheet and stores it in this two-dimensional array. So we have a begin date and end date variable that is equal to our form sheet for cells C2 and D2 to get those values. So that simply just gets the begin date 
that's entered here, the end date that's entered here, stores them in those variables. We then have a variable for our sort value one. So that is also equal to our search form sheet, get range C5, and then the sort value two gets range C8. So that gets whatever values are selected in these cells here, stores them in those variables. We then have a sort column one and a sort column two. So what we begin with here is our range records, which is our two dimensional array that holds our, all of our loan records from the record sheet. And then right after that, we have a set of brackets with a value of zero. And what that means is get the first element of that two dimensional array. And the outer set of elements is the collection of rows and the count of the rows begins at zero. So what this is saying is get the very first row of our records array. And what is that? That is our row of headers. So then we're using the index of method and referencing our sort value one variable, which is our sort, what we want to sort by. So that finds the position in our row of headers of where whatever sort value selected is found in that range of headers. Now, very important here, we have a plus six on the end of this. And the reason is because we need to find the position of that column on our form sheet. And our row of headers is here, but we have six columns before that. So we need to add six to find wherever what is selected in these cells here is found in this row of headers that begins in column seven. So then we come down here to a variable called filtered records. So this is equal to our range records 2D array that holds all of our loan records. And then we're gonna use the filter method which that allows you to pass a function to our two-dimensional array. So it begins with the keyword function. And then in parentheses, we have a variable that represents each row. So we just called it row. And then in curly brackets is what we wanna do. So we create a variable called date, which is equal to each row in our array of records. And then in brackets, we have a two. And again, the count here starts at zero. So what this represents is the column we wanna to get to in each row. So think about our set of loan records. The count begins at zero, so this is column zero, this is column one, this is column two. So we want to get to the origination date column. And then right after that, we have a semicolon to end that line of code. And then we have the keyword return because we're telling it we want to return something. We want to return anytime our date variable, which is the date from each row in our data set, if it is greater than or equal to the begin date variable. And we have a double and because we have a second condition, our date value, our date variable value is less than or equal to our end date variable. So those are our two conditions. If they are met, they get put into this new array variable of our results. It's just our filtered records variable. So then on our form sheet, the first thing we wanna do is clear out any previous results here. Right now we don't have any, but we will eventually when we wanna run a new one right after the previous one, we wanna clear this out. So we wanna beginning in range F3, 
get that data region because that's also like hitting control A. Now the thing about it though is it's going to pick up the headers too and we don't want to clear that out. So we're going to offset one row down. We don't want to offset any columns and then we're going to clear that content. So it just what that does is it just does not clear out our row of headers in our results. So then we have our form sheet again. We want to get the range beginning in row three, column six, which is column F. And we want to go down however many rows are equal to the length of our filtered records array variable because that should only have an array based on our conditions here in our filter. So we just want to go down however many rows are in that set of results. And then we want to go how many columns across? Well, we want to go again, reference our filtered records array variable and this time we're going to reference the first element which is the first row in that array and get the length and the length of a row is how many columns it has so that would return a value of five because there's five columns then we want to set the values of that range on our form sheet to our f the value stored in our filtered records array variable then what we want to do on our form sheet again is get the range beginning in row three, column seven, which is our loan amount column. This time we want to go just one column across. We want to go the same number of rows down and we want to set the number format to an accounting style format. Finally, we have our last line of code, which again, we're on our sheet form variable. We want to get the range, the same range that we got here. And what we want to do is sort based on our sort criteria. So the syntax here is the sort method enclosed in parentheses and then a set of brackets. And each sort is enclosed in a set of curly brackets. So we have the keyword column colon and then our sort column one variable comma another set of curly brackets keyword column colon our sort column two now I have a default fixed third sort option that sorts by column eight which that is just our origination date column so I just have a fixed column reference there so we are going to save this and now what I'm going to do is add a button here so that we can run this straight off of our sheet. So I'm going to go to insert drawing, click on a shape here, just get a rectangle. I'm going to click in here and type the word search, click save and close. So what I need to do here is copy the name of our function because we're going to link it to this button here. So we're going to assign script, click OK. So I'm going to add a begin date of maybe like 5-1-2023 to 5-15-2023. I'm going to click this. We're going to have to authorize this. So I'm going to click continue. Click on the Google account we're using. Go to advanced. Click on this project name at the bottom and then click allow. Now we may have to run this one more time. So I might have to click on it again for it to actually run. And there it is. We have our date range. We have our primary sort as the loan type and then our secondary sort as the location. So if I change these around to 
just the opposite, maybe expand our date range, click search. You can see now the primary sort is the location, our date range expanded, and then our secondary sort is loan type. Well, that is all for now. Till next time.